Hello. Uh, my name is Tobin Saunders. I'm a senior JavaScript developer here at MADE. Uh, a year tomorrow, actually. I've just realized. Um, and uh, this is Amir. So basically, I'm going to take the first section of this uh, talk. Um, we started this project, um, which is uh, Emporio, uh, last year. And this was basically a replatforming project for, uh, for MADE. So as, uh, as Gaia said earlier, We've got a Magento, uh, a Magento web, and we've got a iOS app that's run, been uh, developed by a third party. It was quite lengthy to get any updates to that and to get any uh, kind of control over it, and the company was growing. So basically, the project was to replatform everything onto uh, Web React and React Native. Um, so uh, we knew that at the beginning we were going to have uh, a web platform and we were going to have a native app platform, and we also knew that we wanted to use React for both. Uh, but we wanted to think how we can move as quick as we can. So we were working with Theodo, uh, who helped us to get the project up and running, and uh, there's a considerable amount of uh, proof of concepts done at the beginning, and uh, we sort of investigated what, what we could actually, actually share. So, so what could we share? So the first thing, when I came to React Native, the first thing I thought was, great, I can do React on the web. So React Native, sure, I can share my React components on the app, and then that's brilliant, and I'll just change it in one place and push it out, and everything's great. Well, no, because obviously it's a completely different runtime. You've got completely different primitives, uh, and it's just not possible. And that's OK. That's, that's fine. So, uh, so that's a no. Config, that sort of stuff. Uh, oh, sorry, I mean, business logic. Um, Yes, that's ideal for being shared. It's going to be consistent across all applications. And having it separated and isolated means you unit test it heavier um, and it's more stable. So that's the sort of thing you do definitely want to be sharing. Config, obviously, that's the sort of thing that uh, updates rarely. Things like store codes and stuff. Every time we add a new country, that will update. And it's straightforward. It's not a big problem. And it's perfect for having in one place. Things like styling. Well, things like brand colors, fonts, um, they change rarely. Um, so they're great. Um, and you can have things like breakpoints and that sort of stuff, obviously, for the web-based stuff. Um, but that's about it. You kind of don't really want to share much other styling stuff between uh, native and web. Uh, and higher-order component, higher components, we make a lot of use of those in, the, um, in, the, uh, in both apps, actually. Um, so we use them uh, to wrap our GraphQL data. We use Apollo. And that's how we get data and, and various state stuff in. So that's great. So we knew, uh, we knew what we were going to do. Uh, this is what we decided to share. So we share translations, data aggregators, formatters, types, config, mock data, GraphQL queries, and higher order components. And we use Package Cloud to create a uh, version, uh, uh, a dependency that we can change versions of quite easily. We just bump the version, uh, change the version in the application, and then we know we've got our updates, which are shared. Uh, and this, this is something that will be across all platforms. So that's great. Everyone's happy. Rainbows, unicorns, put the app out. Uh, there were some teething issues around local development and stuff. Um, but the other guys and the rest of the team, we managed to get through those, and we got there. But then there was a business requirement to add another application. So we had web, and we had the app. Um, but then they wanted uh, a showroom application. So this was to basically... Uh, break the barrier down between the digital and the physical so they can have some sort of UI in the, in the shop so people can actually buy and see all of the other products that we have as opposed to the few that we might have in the showroom. Um, so that was fine. And it actually having the shared code meant that we were able to do it uh, a lot quicker than we might have done otherwise. Um, but it did obviously add more complexity and it added more strain on that dependency. Um, and yeah, that was that. So then the other thing that we did is in the web, we actually um, started using a release cycle, which was a, big, a good decision. <clears throat> we used Git Flow, sorry, GitHub Flow. So those are not aware, basically you release your actual features and master becomes clean and you always, um, you never basically release master unless something goes badly wrong. But it means you've got a nice clean master, uh, your features get deployed and features can be managed lovely, uh, uh, you know, easily. But the problem is that different features move at different times. And so, uh, so this is an example of something that might happen. So 
Uh, this old feature got released and it's uh, got a shared version of 1.7.0 and um, we've got another one that needs an update to the shared code base of 1.71 and that's fine, that's being QA'd, that's already released, that doesn't need anything from shared. But then something breaks in production, we've got to put a hotfix in and it needs a change to shared, so we update shared. That goes out before the rest of it, so all the updates for the feature product count now go into production before they've been QA tested or anything else. Of course, this would have been tested as well, but the risk is still there that we're releasing bugs that we've not yet been able to discover. Um, the also, the knock-on effect is that is that you're then bumping versions of shared that might be used in the app, and obviously rolling back versions in the app is considerably harder uh, than in the web. So, what can we do? Well, we thought maybe we could, we could split shared up into smaller dependencies make it more focused and update them less often uh, but it would add more complexity the good stuff would be uh, yeah more focused and less frequent increments on each dependency more choice if you didn't necessarily want translations for a certain app or something um, but the downsides were that it's a difficult transition from what we'd already got um, a lot of complexity and difficult to develop uh, lots of small um, dependencies locally but then we thought, well, actually, well, do we need to share everything? Like, we, sh we, we knew we could share these things, so we shared them. And then we thought, well, what should we share? So now we're starting to realize that uh, we don't necessarily need to share everything in every application. So things like translations, it's great to be shared, but it needs to be shared separately as a separate service. It's something that changes regularly, almost daily sometimes, and, uh, and often needs to be updated and people need things to go out. So we're going to have that probably as a separate service. And higher order components, they can definitely be shared, but we needed to keep them more generic and more simplistic. Uh, otherwise, complexity and problems and bugs become more complex. Things around queries and uh, the data that we're requesting, not really anymore. We realized that was where a lot of the problems were coming. You're requesting data that you need on the app, but you're also then requesting that for the web, but the web needs a completely set, different set of data, and suddenly you've got multiple uh, volumes of data that you just don't need in either application. So having that in the application itself makes much more sense. And then, of course, the knock-on effect to that is that mock data, there's no point having that in shared because it's completely different for your application. You're only using it for tests and that sort of thing. So that needs to go in its own application as well. And then things like these are ideal for being shared still. So that's the sort of thing that, that ideally needs to be shared. Things like types, though, you want to find some solution to pull that into your project so that you can get the uh, little, little helpful tool tips in your IDE. Um, that was one thing that we managed to solve. So in conclusion, sharing code, fantastic, and helped us a lot, and been great, but not necessarily always a good idea. So just because you can doesn't necessarily mean you should, and that was the lesson that we've learned. So I shall, uh, I'll hand over to Amir now, who's going to talk you through some of the problems he's had with WebViews. Thank you. Uh, yeah, WebViews. My name is Amir. I've been a JavaScript developer now for 11 months. I joined MADE in August, uh, primarily working on the native app team. So WebViews, what do they do? Do they do things? Let's find out. So. Uh, for those who are not familiar, WebViews basically render web content in the uh, native view. Uh, we've used WebViews in certain areas in the uh, React Native app, but the particular part I want to talk about is the checkout uh, in which we've used WebViews, which turned out to be a bit of a headache. Um, so the reason why we use WebViews on the checkout, mostly rather than an API-based checkout, is because we were under a bit of time pressure and um, we had a few blockers as well with the APIs and the team that manages that were also under time pressures with a certain uh, other project. Um, so this is how we thought it would go. That's how it really went. Um, yeah. So pros though, should be quick and easy to use WebViews. Um, like I said, we use it in certain parts of the app. It was fine. No issues, it was great. Minimal dev work, no complications. Um, this is sort of a, just a 
generic snippet of code that I pulled from React Native Docs. Looks simple. You can find more props and methods online if you want to read up on it more. But uh, in our case, again, this was the reality that it came with a lot of headaches. So cons, cookies. Uh, if you're going to build anything that requires cookies, login, check out, it's sort of a red flag. Um, this is because you basically need to manage your cookies both on the React Native side and for the cookies that you get from the web content. So what we did was we used a third-party plugin called React Native Cookies, which, um, to be honest, I don't recommend because they, they've stopped maintaining it now. Um, <laughs> uh, so this, but, 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 uh, <laughs> the plugin gave us uh, access to both the cookie stores. Um, so basically when the web view would finish loading, we would uh, fetch the cookies and pair them. It was great. Um, um, but that sort of leads into the next con of debugging. So as soon as we loaded up the, uh, the debugger, the cookies would desynchronize. So we had a very big problem when it came to debugging any issues that we had with the web views. So we came up with a temporary hacky solution of just putting console.errors everywhere, which, no. <laughs> um, next, DOM manipulation is expensive, uh, at least in our case. Uh, so we had to remove a lot of content so that the browser could, uh, the user couldn't browse in, uh, browse the website within the app. So we had to remove a bunch of products, we had to remove a bunch of pop-ups. Um, this came with having to work with the, the Magento team who basically we would, they would send us a message and then we would send one back with uh, what we wanted removed and we would be injecting JavaScript uh, based on those messages that we received. And then finally, changes on the website. So if any changes happen on the website and you get a bug, you're going to have a bug on the website and then the user's going to be like, oh, maybe I should use the app. Well, no. <laughs> they, got, they got a bug on the app as well. well that's not good. Um, so this is just an example of how much, uh, how, how many elements and how much of the actual checkout we, we, we strip. So on the left side is the, uh, the mobile view of the web app. Uh, so just below, below the go to check out, the black go to check out, you've got a bunch of products, you've got some even got a little, hey, download our app. But you don't need that because you're already on the app. Um, and then on the right is actually the, the final version. So that's what we, what we ended up with. So what we wanted to do originally was to remove all of those elements on load end, um, which is great. But the issue was it was, well, it was loading quickly, which is great. But you would see what you wanted removed for a split second. And then it would, so you'd have everything. And then it flashed with the finished product, which is not good. So we decided to move to doing that on the load start, which is great. We don't have any flashes. It's perfect, but uh, it made, meant that our load times were incredibly long compared to the rest of the app. It was slow, it was clunky, it was bulky, it was not a good, it resulted in not good user experience. So here, no web views. You can see it just runs like a normal app. It's great, perfect. That's, that's what you want an app to do. Um, it was by the simulator, but yeah. Actually, this, this product, a display page, actually that video is a web view, and that didn't cause any headaches, so that was great. But yeah, and then here, this is the web view. So not, not a pleasant experience for the, for the user, unless you like, this, yeah, unless you like spinners. <laughs> uh, so conclusion. Really, I mean, web views, as I mentioned, they're great, but use with caution. So do you need to use cookies? Maybe don't use a web view, or at least proceed with caution. Um, and also maybe avoid heavy DOM manipulation and script injection. Uh, maybe, you could get, uh, maybe you could solve that by a lot of companies. What they do is they create a page specifically for the web view and then use that for, your, for the web view. So that would have been what, what we could have done. But I think what we're going to be doing in the future is um, having uh, an API-based checkout and scrapping the web views completely, um, at least on the checkout process. So, yeah. <laughs>